How's it going, everybody? This is Beat the Bush. Today, I'm going to talk about a topic that is highly sought after, which is how to lower your property taxes. Now, for me, I am located in California, so I know the most about property taxes over here and not so much in other states. So all of these things I'm going to be talking about mainly pertains to California. Now, a lot of you have looked at my budget and saw that, wow, you know, your living expenses is extremely low because I paid off my mortgage. So I only have to pay for my HOA and property taxes combined. The total cost of this is extremely low. And a lot of you wondered how I got it so low. It's nothing magical. I'm not doing anything against the law over here. There's no tip or trick, but it's mainly the timing of the market that got me at such a low rate. Let me explain. I bought this place sometime in 2010. This is pretty much at the bottom of the market. And since then, the property prices has basically doubled in price or more. So for someone that bought it around that time, 2010, I'm going to be paying about half the property tax as someone that is buying a property today. Now, the interesting thing about California is we have this thing called Prop 13, which essentially limits the increase of your property taxes from year to year. It essentially caps your property tax at 1% of your assessed value. And on top of this, every single year thereafter, they can increase the property tax. However, it's capped at 2% maximum every single year. So you can imagine if your property price rise by 6% every single year or 100% in a, you know, eight or nine years or so, the property tax increase is not going to be all that much compared to the property value. So you're going to have some people that have been squatting on their houses like myself, and you're going to be paying at a preferred rate from when you purchased the property. The idea behind this proposition initially was that people did not want to worry about their increasing home prices because if the price of their home increases to a certain extent, like right now, then they essentially might not be able to afford their property taxes if it becomes too expensive. For now, I'm not gonna get into um, if Proposition 13 is a correct thing to do or not in terms of property prices, but I'm just gonna talk about how you can lower your property taxes from various tactics that you can employ. Now, this Proposition 13 is basically based on your property assessed value. Now, what does this mean? Assessed value is essentially what you paid for your property. However, you can get reassessed if you do some sort of home improvement on your property. For example, you add another floor, you add another room in the yard or something, and then you're gonna get reassessed, and then all of a sudden your property tax is gonna go up. So. If you want to keep your property taxes low, you want to avoid adding things to your property to avoid increasing your property value. So if you want to minimize your property value, don't build on your house to increase your property value. Do not increase the curb appeal. You know, sometimes when you sell your house, you want to increase the curb appeal to increase the price. But when you're going to get reassessed, when you're living in it, you don't want to increase the curb appeal because then that would increase your property taxes. Once you get an assessed value for your home, you can also challenge this. You can use information from around your neighborhood of similar properties. And if their assessed value happens to be lower than yours, you can go, hey, what happened here? Why can't my assessed value be the same? You know, the square footage is the same. The number of rooms is the same. Why is yours a little bit higher? But you want to be very careful about this because if your assessed value is actually higher, then if you appeal to this and the assessor comes in and go, no, you know, your value was actually lowered before, then all of a sudden you shot yourself in the foot and increased your property value instead. So be very careful if your assessed value is much lower than what you think the value of your home is going to be. If you have a situation where an assessor actually comes in to look at your home, you want to point out all the bad things of your home. If they only notice the new things and they missed a crack in the wall, they missed, you know, some hole, you know, some damage or something, then they might assess the value of your home higher than it's supposed to be. So you want to actually point out the bad things and let them notice the good things. Don't upgrade anything that you can. Don't change the windows. Don't change the carpet. Don't get re remodeling for the kitchen. If you're going to live in the home long term, you might actually want to make these home improvement because these are for yourself. But know that whenever you do something, the property tax value might actually go higher and then you have to pay more consistently ever after from there. 
In California, there's another thing called Prop 60 for people 55 years and older. Now, I know a lot of people are not 55 yet, but this is something you wanna keep in mind for basically uh, personal wealth planning. You wanna know that these propositions are out there for you to use so that you can minimize your property taxes as you get older. What this proposition tries to do is that if you want to move to another home, maybe a cheaper home, for example, let's say you bought a home that's only 100K, you only need to pay $1,000 in property tax every single year. The property over the course of 20, 30 years increased from 100K to 500K, and then you kind of look, well, you know, maybe you want to move somewhere else. You want to take some cash out of the home because you no longer need to live at a certain area, maybe for the schools or something. So you want to move somewhere else that's a little bit cheaper. Maybe it's only $400,000. So during that transaction, you can pocket another 100K, right? And then if you're 55 or older, you can essentially move that $1,000 property tax into that new place that you're moving. So this is a really great deal, right? If this proposition wasn't there, then if you move to this new $400,000 home, all of a sudden your property taxes is gonna be a lot more than what was there before, which is $1,000 a year. Now for this proposition to work, you actually have to move in the same county. So this limits the range of places that you can move. Or if you're moving to one of the eight counties in California that allows the transfer of property taxes. There are a bunch of other requirements that goes along with transferring your property taxes. So do look into this. All I want to cover in this video is that you can transfer it, transfer some very low property tax from one place to another as long as you are older than 55. There's also a thing called home sale exemption here. So this essentially makes it so that you do not have to pay capital gains taxes on the home appreciation value. We know that in California, the price goes up significantly. And if you bought in some time ago and then you made some money, you don't wanna pay taxes on this. And the home exemption is 250K for a single person and 500K for a married couple. You do have to live in the property for two years. And if you're a single person, you have to live in it yourself for two years. And if you're a couple, both of you actually have to live in it for two years in order to qualify for this. Now I covered ways where you can actually lower your property taxes, but I think the best way to drastically lower it because when you get your home reassessed, right, it's just gonna move by a little bit, but you can make leaps and bounds if you have great market timing because if you happen to buy a home at a very low value, which is something that I personally did, you pay very little for the home, you gain a lot when the home appreciates, you also pay a very low property tax. Of course, the housing costs right now, it's incredible. Maybe in the future, it's going to dip down and it might be very good to hold on to some kind of down payment just in case that the home values comes down. And then you can go in there when the market is down and just pounce on all these properties when no one else has the down payment to buy any homes. Remember back in 2008, everyone was broke. The costs of the homes were very low and people can't afford to buy it because, you know, it's a housing crisis. People don't have money to do it. But that is the point where you need your down payment so that you can scoop up all those low property prices and it's in two folds. You can pay basically a lifetime of very low property taxes as well as make an incredible gain on the property value itself when it does rebound. For people that have a really low property tax right now, you can imagine that once you sell, it's not actually a very good thing because then you lose out on this low property value. What is better here is try to keep on, hold on to the property instead and rent it out because the rent price sort of factors in the current property tax right now, right? Whoever's paying the rent right now, they are partially compensating for the current property tax value. So when you rent out a home that you already own that has a very low property tax value, then you can essentially take home a very high rental income while paying a very low property tax. I hope all this was very interesting for you. I know it's not like a silver bullet for anyone buying a property right now. So it does have some market timing characteristics to it. And it also has a little bit of wealth planning involved in order to get your property tax low. Thanks for watching this video. Don't forget to give me a like, comment down below. Let me know what you think of all these tactics. It's just buy the books based on the proposition, based on law here. Don't forget to push that subscribe button and ring that bell icon. Thanks for watching.